Okay, so you've been given an input list um, and possibly a stage plot and you've got a gig coming up and you're on Digico SD12. <coughs> There's a lot you can get done on in the SD12 offline editor uh, before you actually arrive on the show. So you want to be as organized as you possibly can. Um, so we're going to open SD12 editor. And I'll give you a little bit of an overview and then we'll go through some steps. Um, so the editor, the, the console itself has two screens. The right hand screen um, doubles as your master window. There's a button to access the master window. And then you've got, um, when it's not in master, it's in the view of your, your two banks of 12 channels. So I'm just gonna um, go to the, the left screen, which is surface two, and then the main screen, which is the right one, which is, is surface one. So um, before we do any of that, um, we're just going to kind of reset the board or reset the layout, so to speak. So if you do that, go to Files, Session Structure, and I'm going to give this uh, session a name, call it Start Festival Version 1, and I'm then going to default everything. So I'm going to hit Default All and hit Restructure, and yes. So these windows will load, you'll lose all your names um, and you'll, you'll um, have your uh, file. So th there's a file there. Um, I'm going to give it a title. So the file name carries the title. One, and hit OK and then hit save. So this is now my blank uh, digico basically. So the first thing I want to do after a structuring, I'll just quickly go back into the structure session for a second. So, so we can actually define how many input channels. Um, we can define our global OG sends. We can define how many stereo or mono OGS buses, how many stereo, mono or group buses, and so on and so forth. I'm going to leave this all by default. So it's currently 48, uh, 6 and 6 for OGSs and 6 and 6 for groups. So I'll leave that by default. Um, I've now saved it. Now. I do my outputs before my ins so that when I'm mixing, I'm set up and ready to go. So we're gonna open screen two, which is the left screen on the physical board, and then hit the layer button um, to go to our auxiliaries. So these are auxiliaries. I'm just gonna show you that. Now we're gonna go to screen one, which is the right hand side, hit the layer button, and these are our groups. So I'm just going to move this over and this over. So what will happen is you'll have this on the left-hand side of your Digico, this on the right-hand side of your Digico, and then when you hit master, this will open, but only on the right-hand screen of your SD12. So now we're ready to actually do something. So I'm, I've got my groups window open. Now, Digico um, by default is setting group seven as the master. Now look, SD12 Surface does has a, have a dedicated master to bus, but SD9 doesn't. So it's, it's kind of good to get used to just using a group as a master because essentially a group is a master. Now on the console, you just touch the word. On the software, you right click it. So I'm gonna right click uh, my group seven and I'm gonna rename it group seven. Then I'm gonna go over to group 12, which I want to use as my master. And I'm gonna name that master. So I've got my master bus um, currently labeled, um, but it's not patched, it's not going anywhere. And I'm not actually going to take a feed out of it because I'm gonna use matrices to set up the PA. So I'm gonna feed channels into the master and then route the master to various matrices which will be reflect the PA components. So I'm gonna open um, screen two, go to um, my outputs, which is layer two by default, open my matrixes and I'm going to rename uh, four of my matrixes. So this is going to be left. This is going to be right. This is going to be sub, which will be a mix of left and right. And this is going to be infill, which will also be a mix of left and right. So now these are labeled, I have to physically patch them. So to take input to a channel or a place, you click at the top to, to go out of a channel 
or replace uh, input or an output, you click at the bottom. So I'm going to right click the bottom and go output left, rack one, line 15. Output right, rack one, line 16. Sub, rack one, line 14. And infill, rack one, line 13. I always use my last outputs for my main PA because I quite often am doing fallback as well and I want fallback one to be out of output one. So I want to keep my numbering uh, making sense to me. So I, I use the last last bunch of outputs for my main PA. So these are now physically patched, um, but I haven't told these matrices where they're getting their signal from. So I have to do that. So I'm gonna go back to my master page, go to matrices. I'm going to route to matrix, I'm gonna route a matrix input on matrix input one. I'm gonna route an internal group and it's gonna be group 12 left. And then on the next matrix, or well, the next matrix input, I should say, I'm gonna route another internal group and it's gonna be group 12 right. So that's now routed. So now they're ready to go. I can actually drive these inputs into the matrices. So this is the matrix for left and turn that on. This is one for right and turn that on. This and this is the sub. And these are right clicks on, on the um, on the PC, on the Windows machine. Now I need to set their levels. So that one, zero. And so I can select more than one at a time. And this one also needs to be zero. I'm just gonna clear it so I've got none selected and set that one also to zero. So now um, matrix one takes left um, of the master group 12 and then feeds it out to a PA left. Um, matrix input two is fed to matrix two, which is called right, and that goes out to PA right. And then I'm mixing left and right to sub and left and right to infill. Now, at that point, I'd either drop these sub and infill lines to neg six, or I drop the um, main faders on the, on the matrix is to next six because um, I'm trying to avoid, what's happening is because we're summing left and right of stereo, these are gonna come in hotter. So anyway, I'm gonna um, close that. Matrixes are routed. Um, our outputs are named. So our main outputs are named. Um, we've, now we can actually look at uh, setting up some graphics. So I'm gonna open the graphic EQ page. <clears throat> this is it here. Um, and these are your 16 graphic EQ slots. I like to keep my numbering uh, fairly uh, comprehensible. So I'm gonna insert graphics over the matrices. So I open this matrix page here. Um, we've got an insert tab. So just here, insert B. So, so here we've got insert. Insert B. I'm going to actually hit insert A. So it's just insert A. On the console, you'll have access to both. So my left gets insert internal graphic EQ 15. And I have to also insert the output as well. It, it's a send and return. It's like physically patching an analog EQ. So that needs to be internal uh, graphic 15. And I need to turn it on. This is gonna be 16, internal graphic 16, internal 16. I'm not gonna put a graphic over the sub, but I am gonna put a graphic over the infill. So again, I'm gonna to go to insert, I'm gonna to move to insert A, and I'm gonna go internal graphic, let's say 14, and we're gonna to have to return that as well. So now, uh, these are the graphic EQs, and if I want a graphic EQ left, I can do it here. If I want a graphic EQ infill, I can do it here. Now, we're going to want to EQ graphic EQ left and right identically the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gang the left and right graphic EQs. So I'm going to right-click on the left EQ. I'm going to hit Build Gang, and then I'm going to right-click on the Gang button on the right EQ, and if I change the frequency, you should change on both and left, 
left and right. So those EQs are sorted. Um, now I'm going to do my input naming. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of uh, tricks for that. If you're on the actual console, you can actually do layout, channel list, expand your inputs and actually do it from a list, which is really efficient. Um, but if you're on the uh, Windows software, um, we're going to kind of do it the hard way. Um, so I'm going to go to channel one. I'm going to bring my surface over here. I can see it. I'm going to bring my channel list up and I'm just going to label a few channels. So this is channel one. I'm going to right click on the name and go kick in. Next channel. Kick out. I'm not going to do them all. I'm going to do about six of them. Snare top. Snare bottom. Hi hat. And let's do rack one as well. So this is rack time one. So now I've got my channels labeled. Um, I'm going to want to physically patch my channels. Now you can do them individually and, and you can take any channel from anywhere or you can do them in, in bulk. So if you go to the, the top, which is the inward flow of the channel and right click, um, you get your main input tab and you say, well, I want channel one to be on mic one. If you want to do multiple channels, you can say, well, I want to do 12 channels at once. Starting at one, I want channel one to be mic one and two will be two and three will be through and so on and so forth through 12. And you can do every um, bank in, in 12 or eight or four or however many channels that you need to patch. So that's your input um, patching. Um, last bit I want to show you uh, before I wrap up is uh, effects. So this is just a, a, a quick way to set up some effects. So there's a couple of um, there's a couple of steps to this. So I'm going to go further up the board um, where I'm I'm going to have some spare channels. So I'm going to go between channel 37 and 48. I'm going to set up two effects for now. So I'm going to make channel 47 stereo. And I'm going to ch make channel 48 stereo. I'll just double check that worked. Yep, they're both stereo. So now I'm going to make these input from the effects rack. So I need to open my master screen. I'm just going to push this out of the way for a sec. And open my effects rack. So in here, I go new. So I'm going to do a reverb and a delay. So I'm going to do a, let's do a plate reverb. Let's do a vocal plate preset. We can start from there. And let's also do a studio delay. Now, um, from memory, I think the studio delay expects a stereo input. So I might change that. Um, let's do a simple delay. All right, so we've got two effects here and then slot one and two of the rack. So we know they're there. Um, now we're going to do our channels. So this is channel 47. This is going to be our verb, or pr I'd probably call it plate. And then 48 is going to be our delay. So, so we need to tell these channels where they're getting their input. Well, they're getting their input from the effects slot. So we go to our top of our channel, right click, and then input from internal effect one. And then on the delay, we go again, internal, hit input, and we want internal effect two. So these are now patched as stereo returns from the rack, but we haven't actually set up the sends to the effect. So we need to bring up our auxiliaries. So on surface two, we're gonna hit our layer button and we're going to go to Augs's, and I'm going to make, uh, we're just going to do mono send stereo return. So I'm going to make Augs one, which is going to be mono already into the verb. And I'm going to call it send just for your eyes. Uh, I wouldn't normally bother doing that if I was mixing. Um, and then I'm going to call it delay send. So these are just pre-fade auxiliaries currently. Um, we can change the pre-post status. Um, we'd go post-fade for effects, but we need to tell them where they're sending to. So instead of the top of the ch um, channel, we go to the bottom of the OGS, right click and go output to internal effect one. And then on the delay, right click output to internal effect two. So these are mono OG send and stereo return. And now, now they're pretty much set up. So if we want, as long as we've got our faders at zero on the desk, 
um, we want to send a channel to it, we go to that channel and we go and drive it up. Now you can see that channel there says post fade. You can click that, it'll be pre-fade or pre-mute. Now they're, they're already on post-fade and if these are effect sends, we'd want them to be post. So you can globally change your, your sends um, or you can do them one at a time. You can also turn them on and off and you can drive them up. So that's the effects patched. Um, now we just do a little bit of high pass uh, filter work. So I'm going to open layer surface screen two. So I've got um, Surface 2 here. I'm going to go to Channel 1, um, and I'm going to, up here at the top here, I've got my high pass filters. I'm going to just quickly turn them all on and set some sort of estimates um, based on not being able to hear what's happening. So turn them all on from Channels 1 through 12. Uh, kick in and out. I'm just going to leave them dialed down. Snare uh, bottom. I'm going to put in, sorry, snare top, I'm going to put 120. Um, snare bottom, I'm going to put in 200, roughly. Um, and hi hat, I'm going to put in 250. So I've now got my um, high passes engaged. I would go through the whole desk and, and do an estimate on those or a guesstimate on those. Uh, and then I also want to put phantom on. So uh, kick in might be a beta 91. So I'm going to put plus 48 on. So this is just right clicking up the top of the channel. Um, kick out, snare top and snare bottom are probably dynamics, but hi hat is almost certainly going to be a condenser. So that needs 48 as well. So you go through, uh, do all your ins, do all your outputs. Um, if you're on the console, you can use the layout function. I'm going to do another tutorial, which will be exactly the same process, but from the actual board. Um, and then just make sure you do this. So file, save session. Now you can go file, save as new file, select a thumb drive on your removable, and then push this out to a your um, flash disk or thumb drive and then open it on the console. Um, it's worth mentioning uh, one last thing before we wrap up. I'm just gonna close this. Um, I might, might actually open SD12 again. So I'm just gonna bring these screens back over for a second. Um, so a couple of other things, uh, control groups are basically DCAs. Um, so they are assignable here. You can um, select members and then assign them. Uh, you, you've got your solo set up here. Um, there's a whole bunch of options. Have a look through these. Um, for the moment, I just wanna show you this page. So in setup audio IO, this will show you your connected racks and so if you can't get signal out of a channel, check that your rack is actually connected and that it's got a green light and that you're seeing these inputs. Now, they, they, there's no rack connected. See, that says MADI12, not connected. So you need to be seeing a connection. So make sure um, you've checked that. Um, if you get signal straight away, both in and out, then it's already done. So you don't need to worry about that. Finally, um, just as a sort of backup, um, I do create a, a global snapshot that has the current state of the board. So when we're working on a show, a uh, show might be our show file, and then our snapshots might be song to song, or even small changes. We could have a snapshot that just opens all faders to zero. Um, but I like to do a global one. So I usually uh, leave all the scope uh, by default, and I go insert new snapshot, and I go uh, sound check start and update current. And every now and then I'll update that current snapshot. So that will carry all the information of all your channels, everything that you haven't created safes for, um, and all of that will be in that snapshot. The snapshot then lives inside the file, which is the Digico session file. <laughs>